Dario, next year in 2025, Visitui celebrates its 50th anniversary of making wine in the Napa Valley. That's an amazing feat. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. We, thank you so much. We both know that it's not easy. Yeah. You might be surprised to know that there are only about two dozen wineries in the Napa Valley that were established prior to 1980 that are still operating today with the original founding family. Is that so? That's wow. true. Most have elected to sell and take the money and run. Why haven't you? I haven't even thought about selling. Um, I wanted at a young age to revive my great-grandfather Victorio's winery. And I haven't even thought about possibly selling. What would I do with the money anyway? I, I enjoy what I'm doing, so. Dario, what age did you think at first about reopening your great-grandfather's winery? I must have been 12 years old, and I wrote to the Wine Institute to get some statistics on wineries. And I think at that point, there were 21, 22 wineries existing in the Napa Valley. I was dedicated to reestablishing Visa Tui Winery from an early age. From 12 years of age. Yeah. That's amazing. What year was the first time you came to the Napa Valley and how old were you? I came here probably in 1959, 60. I came again in 1972 working for Canaris Creek Winery. When you came here in 72, what was the Napa Valley like? In many ways, I liked it better. It was smaller, less popular, less tourist, less amenities. Now it has all these great restaurants, hotels, golf courses, all these amenities. A lot of ways I liked it better the way it was. Maybe because I'm older, I don't know. The original winery was founded by your great-grandfather, Vittorio Satui, in 1885 in San Francisco, North Beach. However, before you were born, the winery shuttered at Prohibition and was never reopened in San Francisco. You were brought up in Marin County, across the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco. And I know your parents were not in the wine business, but what, was wine prominent in your household? Was wine on your dinner table? <laughs> My father drank wine with every meal except breakfast, <laughs> but I never saw him drunk. He had a, a glass or two. My mother abhorred wine and abhorred garlic. <laughs> My mother was from Buffalo, Wyoming. My father grew up in the Italian manner uh, where wine was consumed with meals. Dario, you matriculated from San Jose State, went on to UC Berkeley for your MBA. Did you know all along in college that you were destined to reopen the winery? I wasn't sure throughout college I would open the winery. I had um, several businesses at San Jose State, mm -hmm. beer bus, for which I got a kicked out of school. <laughs> um, I had a t-shirt business. I sold thousands and thousands of t-shirts. Then at Cal, I uh, opened a shoe business and I hit it right at the right time. And I thought I was gonna be a millionaire before I ever got out of Cal. And uh, I was running a full-time business, studying, but I made mistakes, I got cheated. I didn't know the shoe business or the leather business. So I uh, made a little bit of money, but I didn't make my fortune. So then I was traveling back from Lake Tahoe and I thought, what am I gonna do with my life? And of course, I'm gonna revive my great-grandfather's winery. 
but I had no money, no real white experience. So a dream was the easy part. The reality was the hard part. Was hiring a winemaker part of your plan or were you? No, because I didn't have any money. Yeah. I had $5,000 I was, I'd saved up. I was living in my Volkswagen van. I promised my new Finnish wife a better lifestyle when we came to America and we were living in a van. And then my mother gave me $3,000. So I had a total of 8,000. And then I was substitute teaching grammar schools, high schools, just to try to stay alive. I, I had everything in my head. Um, during classes while I was substitute teaching, um, I, I just tried to keep the kids quiet. And doctor's appointments, the, the doctors were always late. So I brought all my papers and spread them out and working on my final business plan. I rented a cheap apartment in Napa and we didn't have much furniture. And then I was working for Beaulieu Winery at $4 an hour as a tour guide. During my tour, I devote a minute, minute and a half saying I plan to be restarting my great grandfather's winery. If I, anybody's interested, see me after the tour. Mm -hmm. Virtually nobody was interested. And then one day, a great thing happened. Um, this little guy, he told me that he was interested. And so I brought this person and his wife to Visitui Winery, mm -hmm. told them everything. But he was a pretty interesting fellow. He was the second biggest stockholder after me. He invested $15,000. And for the ABC, he had to fill out a report. He was a professor at UCLA in physics, and he'd written a few textbooks. And I didn't really know who he was. One year, this is seven, eight years after Julian Swinger invested $15,000. David Saxon came into the tasting room. He was the president of the University of California. He said, well, you know who Julian Swinger is, don't you? And I said, yeah, he's a professor at UCLA. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, you don't know who he really is, do you? And he said, come outside. He said, when Julian was a teenager, he would give lectures at the Columbia Library on physics. Nearby students would come to his lectures and nearby professors from other universities would come to his lectures. He was wow. a genius in physics. So he won the Nobel Prize. Julian got his PhD at 21 years old. Crazy. So Julian apparently had a feeling for me and he thought I could succeed. And anyway, he was a great man and uh, so humble. So it, it's safe to say, or correct to say, that without Julian, your road to reopen Visa Tui would have been a little bit more difficult. Yeah, absolutely. I think if you try hard enough, long enough, um, you'll see some success. And so... I had uh, tried to raise $100,000. I didn't know about a UC Davis study saying to, to start a small winery. You needed at least a million dollars. And that was basically 50 years ago. I didn't know of that study. And so, uh, and I never got the 100,000. Dick Gelati, ex stockholder, put in the parking lot, 20 spaces and the foundation my brother-in-law put on the roof. So I raised $62,500, including my 8,000. It was really hard in the beginning. I, I, I had an old wooden reject door from 
Central Valley lumber. It cost me $3. I had this on my two barrels. I had a hand crank calculator from Burroughs that uh, my great grandfather had used. I made every phone call collect. I, I didn't have any vineyard. I didn't own any vineyard. The winery, I didn't own the property. A realtor named Gene Cafoid, he bought the property, put up the building. The building cost $15 a square foot. Uh, we didn't know what we were doing. Uh, one time a wall fell down. Uh, once a week, a carpenter, Norm Madsen, would come from Napa and give us a, a, some advice. And um, the top carpenter had some carpentry experience, and I paid him $6 an hour. The rest had no experience in carpentry. And we used planks for shelving. I found an old deli case um, across the street. Oh, and, Spinks, right? Remember that? Yeah. Old man Spinks? <laughs> and uh, uh, I paid $200 for it. It was all rusty. I faced it with redwood. That's right. And that was our 12-foot deli case for selling cheese. I didn't know what to do. Had I known what to do, I probably would have done it like the other people. So I did it totally unorthodoxly. And... Um, I bought 20 barrels, that I paid cash for. And um, my Finnish wife was always against the project. She said, why don't you get a steady job? She kept telling me I was gonna fail over and over and over. And we opened on March 4th, 1976. And we did $141 all day. And that was only because the banker came by and the neighbors came by sure. and bought a bottle of wine, and they never came back ever. And the second day, we did, uh, I think, something like $91. So my wife was telling me, you're going to fail, you're going to fail. It was really tough. Um, I didn't have a forklift. I worked seven days a week, 12, 14 hours a day. I was so exhausted, I'd sleep on the floor sometimes. And... Um, I lived in the winery part-time, took cold showers to rent out my house. But we made a small profit the first year, $2,640. Otherwise, I'd be back scrubbing tanks for some winery. But were you always single-minded that this is what you were going to do? And once you started, you're going to do this no matter what? Or, or yeah, were there yeah, some pivots? I was always single-minded. Yeah. And um, I knew I didn't know very much and I was underfinanced and my winemaking ability was horrible but um, somehow I muddled through and we kept growing each year. I took the prospect of um, selling direct <clears throat> at Visitui Winery. People then laughed at me. Now everybody's copying us. Why did you pick the current location of our winery and marketplace? I decided early on I wanted to have a deli and picnic grounds. There were three locations with commercial zoning. Where Bricks is now, yep. uh, north of Yonville, the former cement works, where Brass what is now, and V62 Winery, the, that location. I thought at some point people get hungry, at some point they have to urinate, and mm -hmm. probably the middle of the valley is a good location. Bricks Restaurant was too far south. Cement Works was too far north. I got Caltrain statistics. 40% of the people did not go beyond Christian Brothers, Behringer, or Krug. And so I chose Visa Tui. How much of your dream was luck or how much of it was persistence and talent? I think it was totally persistence. And um, everybody has a dream. And you can realize your dream if you try hard enough, long enough. Uh, I totally believe that. It wasn't about the money. The money was secondary. But I wanted to prove that I could be successful to myself. 
what are you most proud of? And do you have any regrets? Bringing Visa Tui back to fruition and honoring my great grandfather and my family and proving to myself that I could make it all work. Dario, thank you. Yeah, thank you.